exciting. Okay. <laughs> We're such nerds. We are. <laughs> Welcome back. We're the Book Mavens. I'm Amanda. She's Rachel. And you're joining us this week as we discuss The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. It's a middle grades book. So to be honest, it's, it's our first one for our yeah, YouTube channel. It's sure. our first one. It was a choice I had put on our decision fatigue, fatigue wheel. wheel. And it had been recommended to me by a friend and uh, who specializes in like elementary grade books. And it's, uh, we're not, it's not a very complex book because it's written for upper elementary middle grades. So, but it's a very good book. All right, so The Girl Who Drank the Moon is a fantastical story of a protectorate town that is forced to give up the youngest child um, every year. And and it's a story about... To the witch. To the witch. And these misunderstandings and what's happening in terms of there being um, this kind of spell on these people where they don't ask questions they mm -hmm. don't they don't really yeah they don't fight against the status quo and this baby is chosen to be sacrificed the mother says no and fights and resists and that baby ends up being somewhat special and uh our witch who isn't really what they think she is decides um not to take her to where she normally takes the babies but keeps her um, and raises her and mistakenly and magics her mm -hmm. with moonlight instead of blessing her with luck with starlight. And so we kind of follow this journey of this witch who never wanted to raise a child, um, ends up raising this, this little girl and loves her. And, um, and then we're also following another storyline of what's happening in the protectorate with somebody who really is resisting mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, but doesn't really know how to fix it. And um, we kind of journey from there about these two storylines kind of coming together and watching this this little girl grow and learn some really interesting life lessons along the way. I like it. Yeah. Who'd you like? Favorite um, characters? I mean, I really, I really liked all of the characters. I think everybody had a role to play. Um, I mean, I did, I did... It's just because I'm a mother, but I think it just resonates with me. But Luna's mother, our main character of the book, Luna, but her mother in terms of what happens with her daughter being taken from her and she's locked up and is called crazy and kind of goes mad locked in this tower and she finds little pockets of magic and just does these things to survive and she never forgets her daughter she forgets her daughter's name she forgets her own daughter's name but that love that intent to find her never goes away and it's so beautiful um that she find that that she's able to find a way and to get there and the trauma she experiences and then trying to bond with her daughter and there's some lovely words exchanged some mm. some really really beautiful things that are said between her and her daughter in terms of love that love's expansive it doesn't you don't have to split your love you can grow your love and love more than one person and I think that that's that's really beautiful and I that was a character that really resonated for me for this book mm. um I loved Glurt the bog monster <laughs> I liked him for so many reasons I liked that he was often the like voice of I don't want to say voice of reason, but he was often the voice of skepticism. Like when Zan first brings a child home, he's like, what are you doing? We are not equipped to deal with a baby. Like you were supposed to pass this baby off to people who could care for it. And here we are. What are you doing? And then of course, you know, but then he's always the, makes the most of it. You know, he comes to love Luna and he's always taking care of Therian and he loves Zan. And, you know, their little, their little family that they build in their, in their little crater. I love him, and and I did love um, Antane. I loved Antane. He was deeply uncomfortable with with what's happening in the protectorate, and then eventually, you know, through circumstance, he just kind of he kind of cuts away and does what's best for him eventually. But I loved that he maintained his family relationships. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes when people um, like 
he leaves a job that his mother had really wanted him to have and decides to do something he likes and you know he he doesn't want to be involved with the way that they you know sacrifice the children to the to the witch every year and then you know mm -hmm. i like his journey because it this is a quiet rebellion yeah his rebellion is quiet and he he comes to do what's best for him and to do what he thinks is right but he doesn't do it in a way that sacrifices his family relationships or the relationships really yeah, I'm just gonna I'll just categorize his family relationships, which I like. He a quiet rebellion is a way to do it. And I love his I love his love for his his family that he creates too when he marries um Athene and they have a little baby. Mm -hmm. Really sweet. Mm -hmm. I love her character too. She cracks me up. Like when she bosses Very those strong. guards around, mm -hmm. she's like, look at me in the eye. And they're like, You know we're not supposed to, and she's like <laughs> You tell me right now what I want to know. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's somebody who's beloved. And that's, yeah, that's, and that's how they do it. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. She's beloved and she has built these relationships with people and she's very kind and caring. And, and that's what, you know, Antane needed in his life. And they're just right for each other. And then they just create this little pocket of joy in their Really which sad is existence yeah which is protectorate. yeah that's supposed and that's the whole thing the protectorate is kind of fogged in sorrow is how it's described but that's you know kind of an important plot point for the story but yeah i'd say those two were my favorite because i like how they just kind of quietly they say their piece and then they kind of just get quietly about doing the best they can and i, I liked that themes um love is a big is a big theme the expansiveness of love, but mm -hmm. also the inevitability of change is a big one. And that you can't fight against some things and about acceptance and growth. There's a lot of great themes, I think, for children who mm -hmm. are, like we talked about, the age that what we would recommend this book to. If we're talking about very proficient readers who are looking at upper elementary into middle school. Mm -hmm. um, just because of those themes and about what we can't change and, and accepting the things that we can't change and growing from that experience. I think it's a big part of this book. And that sh they use the word consequences a lot. That, you know, choices have consequences. And I think that's a really valuable lesson to learn because... You know, it is a it is a childhood fantasy story, so it does have a you know a positive conclusion, but it's certainly not like a and all the problems were solved and nobody had anything bad happen. Like it, it's not like that. It's a little bit more realistic in that you know your choices and your actions have real consequences, and that that's just part of living is you have to learn sometimes to deal with the consequences of our actions. And I thought mm -hmm. that was a really valuable theme as well and like you were talking about that love is not this finite thing that we have to give that love is expansive and infinite yeah you don't you don't have a set up. amount of love and that when you mm -hmm. love somebody that it's going to take away the love that you can have for somebody else that mm -hmm. it will just grow you're not dividing your love it just grows and i really like that i think that's that's very important um i definitely feel that as a parent like having say i have three children this idea that you don't having another child doesn't take love away from your first child. It mm -hmm. just grows and grows. And I really like that. That really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, overall thoughts about this book. I don't, I don't generally gravitate towards like elementary middle as a 37 year old woman. So that was, <laughs> that was, a, that, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the story is definitely simplistic. Um, however, the vocabulary is quite high. So that's why I would say that it, you would probably recommend this for a proficient reader. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't one that I would necessarily go back to. It might be one that I might encourage my children to read at the appropriate time or maybe read along with them. But for my own particular particular enjoyment as an adult, um, this was definitely just kind of a one and done. I don't think I would return to this book no, for my own Yeah, I, I don't know that I'll return to it for myself. It's not like one of my go-to you know, childhood favorites. But I do mm -hmm. think it's a great read aloud yeah. book. So if you, you know, if you're a teacher looking to read aloud for your class, I think this could be a great choice. I also think um, if you are, if you are giving a, if you need to give a gift, because sometimes upper elementary, middle school is very difficult to give gifts for. And I don't like to give children books that I haven't read just because, you know, with adult friends, they'll maybe forgive you, but <laughs> you know, 
So I, I think it would be a good gift book for, a, a you know, an upper elementary, early middle school child in your life. But I also think it would be a great read aloud book. So if you're looking to read along with your child or to have something that you can transition with them where they read some and you read some together, I think it could be a really great book for that because it is very beautifully kind of lyrically written. Mm -hmm. And that kind of rhyming scheme helps with decoding some of the more complex words and the higher vocabulary so i think it's a uh, i think it's worthy of the praise that it gets it's gotten yeah, a lot of awards absolutely. i think it's very worthy of that i don't know that i would like you said i don't think this is one i as an adult will return to but i would not mind going on this journey with a with a child in my life either mm -hmm. it was it would have been a very enjoyable journey on that too and fostered a lot of i think really wonderful conversations i mean it is told in a way that's very readable mm -hmm. you know that that you're reciting the story and it's um yeah it would be a, it would be a nice a nice time to spend reading this book with a with a child um and it's not it's not overly feminine i would definitely read this with my boys it's not what i would consider like a little yeah, girl i don't story. consider it a, i don't think it's really a you know a gendered book i think yeah. it's just a good adventure kind of mm. fantasy story i think it's just a good story yeah so, um, Kingdom of Copper will be our last book for February, for the month of February. And then, as we've teased in earlier videos, we're doing a special project in March. And by special project, I mean, I'm getting Rachel to read lots of mystery books <laughs> with me. We're doing Mystery March, and we will release a, a promo video here shortly about that and the books that we're going to give a try and the detectives. Man is very excited. I'm very excited. I have picked <laughs> out books that I had also not read, except for one. One of these I have read, um, but it's, you'll see, it's absolutely worth reading again. But uh, join us next week when we're talking about Kingdom of Copper, the second book in the David Bod trilogy. Like and subscribe and let us know in the comments if you have read The Girl Who Drank the Moon or if you have any other recommendations for you know burgeoning readers and books that you can read aloud with children we are always interested in that and we will see you next time bye, bye. wow she really struggled there on the dismount <laughs> just like <"Ooh." laughs>